Hey there, you're watching the Data Dispatch. Thanks for tuning in. Today, I'm going to talk about one of my favorite relatively new toys, the Dometic CFX375DZ. Okay, so I've had this cooler about a year and I feel like I've really put it through its paces. So at the top of this video, we'll do a little walkthrough and a little specs rundown in case you're unfamiliar with how these power fridges work or even what they are. And at the end, we'll talk about what I like and dislike the most about actually using it on kind of a week to week basis. All right, so this is the Dometic CFX3. That's just the model number, 75, 75 liters in size, DZ, the dual zone. So it has these two separate compartments. This fridge is big. It's about 35 inches long, it's about 19 and a half inches wide, and it's almost 19 inches tall. So it's a monster. And it weighs just a touch over 60 pounds. I think it's like 61 and some change. Um, Dometic claims that it'll fit 113 cans, which I've never put that to the test, but we've done some pretty lengthy trips with it and space has never been an issue. So like I said, the DZ refers to dual zone. It has these two separate compartments and you can make them be a fridge fridge. You can go fridge freezer, freezer fridge, freezer freezer, any combination you want. Um, it runs off of either AC or DC power, just your standard wall outlet or you know your cigarette style plug. And Dometic says that it needs 1.43 amp hours per hour to run. I've actually done better than that in the field, which has been a nice surprise. And lastly, they have an app that you can connect to it on your phone via Bluetooth or I think even Wi-Fi and it has little sliders to change the temperature. You can change which sides of fridge, which sides of freezer. You can turn it on, you can turn it off, that kind of thing from your phone, which is a sort of a nice little novelty, but I actually don't use it that much. So if they offered a cheaper version without that, personally, that's what I would buy. So that's just a quick spec rundown, but that's probably not what you're here for. Uh, you can just read that stuff on the internet. The real question is, how do I like it? Well, I don't like it. I love it. So let's get into the highlights. Number one, no more last minute runs for ice, right? Uh, you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about running out of ice on a trip. Uh, you don't have to worry about, you know, your sandwich meat or your cheese falling into that slushy kind of half ice, half water stuff at the bottom and eating, you know, soggy food. That's over. This is literally like traveling with your fridge from home. And even better than that, when you get home, say from like a four or five day trip where you might have run out of ice a little bit early, and you're kind of wondering what you should keep, what you shouldn't, that's over. It's, everything just stays good. It's great. Number two, it's a tall fridge. So jugs of milk, bottles of wine, if you're into that kind of thing, I am fit standing up. I know that there are other coolers that fit tall as well, but I don't own any of those. So this was a nice change of pace. Number three, this is a eliminated a big headache for me of uh, just the way that I used to pack up, which was, you know, if I was going on a, say a three day trip, I'm going to leave Friday morning for a long weekend. That's sort of a typical adventure around here. I would, any food that I bought had to get loaded up in the fridge, you know, the house fridge before we go. And then because I live in the South, even in, you know, kind of April, early May, I mean, it can be in the nineties. So packing up cold food is kind of the last thing on the list you want to do so friday morning typically go route get fresh ice load everything up hope you don't forget something hope you don't confuse adventure food with house food things like that with this that's over i am able to plug this in tuesday wednesday it doesn't matter whenever in the fridge anything that's supposed to come with me on a trip goes in here from the get-go never in the house fridge that way there's no possible screw-ups there's no forgetting anything if i do or if i do it's just because i forgot to go buy it um and then sort of Thursday night, I can load it up in the truck, plug it into the garage outlet. So that way I'm just running off a of house power. I basically, everything is just, just like it's in the fridge at home. Friday morning, all I have to do is unplug it from the wall, plug it into the side of the truck, and I am good to go, no extra work at all. And all the food is just, you know, kept perfectly. It's fantastic. And lastly, this thing is super useful outside of camping or overlanding or wherever you're into. Um, Swim party for the kids and you want drinks outside, just plug it in, no need to get ice, you're good to go. Renting a VRBO style house where you're gonna you know, take a bunch of food to take there, you just load this up, you don't have to unload when you get there. Take this out of the car, plug it in, saves you some time. If you're into hunting or fishing, set it to freezer, freezer. No need to worry about spoilage on your way home. It really is fantastic. I use this thing, I don't know, three times more than I thought I was going to. I brined my turkey in here last Thanksgiving, you know, to leave the fridge open for more space. There's just a ton of uses that I didn't think of before I bought it. So I absolutely love it. 
but it's not perfect. So what are the downsides? Well, number one, it is silly expensive. I bought mine on sale last year, but I think right now this one is $1,400 and the 55 liter, which is kind of, you know, it's little brother is $1,200. So unless you're going to use it a ton, it's probably just not worth it. Number two, and it goes, this goes for this model only. It is just too big. Um, you know, I went through the logic of if I'm going to spend 1200 bucks or whatever it was at the time on the 55 liter, I might as well spend the $1,400 on the 75 liter, get the extra space, get the dual zones. The 55 is only a single zone. Um, but in reality, I've only ever actually used one of these as a freezer once outside of uh, power unit, power consumption testing. And as far as space goes, this has been perfectly fine. In fact, for most trips, it's actually too big. So I just wish I would have gotten a smaller one. You know, even just maneuvering it around, I can't, I can barely carry it outside of a door even by myself just because of how large it is. Um, so I would have gone one step down to the 55. And lastly, you know, when I got it, I wouldn't say it was a headache, but, you know, I keep probably, I guess it's got to be my most expensive piece of gear, right? And I keep it in the back of the truck. So I was always kind of worried that I was going to mess it up. You know, the, the bed cover is not perfectly waterproof. Uh, I was always worried, you know, I leave it back here when we go camping. I was always worried I was going to forget to shut the bed cover or something like that. I'm used to managing it now and they do sell a cover, but you know, that's another $150. So it was just some initial nervousness that my, that my most expensive piece of gear was a cooler that sits in the back of my truck. Uh, the entire trip. So I don't know. That's maybe a weird one, but it definitely was the thing that bothered me for the first little bit. All right, I just want to do a couple quick cuts here. I uh, some I probably should have done. This is what I was interested in before I bought. So this is the size of the cooler versus a Yeti 65, which is a fairly standard size cooler. You can see definitely how much taller it is. Um, it's a little wider, but it takes up you know appreciably more space in the back of the truck than the Yeti 65 does. So that's one thing I probably should have highlighted on. And then what I also should have done was what it actually looks like on the inside. So it has these two distinct compartments and then even within this compartment over here, you know, the compressor sits here. So it has a basket. This is where I normally put my raw meats down here, just get it out of the way. The rest is kind of open for anything. You see how tall, this is a standard size bottle of wine. So that's a good height indicator for you so i mean it is massive because remember no ice goes in here at all right so it just all of this is complete storage it it is a ton of space and the last thing i didn't hit on was if you're nervous about the weight um, it's actually lighter than a fully loaded down yeti or something like that because what you can do is you can load it down in your kitchen inside but then take these baskets out like all of it as opposed to just those little baskets at the top of the yeti take all of these out like this load the fridge into the truck or your car and then load all the food so the most you ever have to pick up is the 61 pounds um, as opposed to you know whatever a yeti 65 which is like 35 or 37 pounds something like that 20 pounds of ice bunch of food i mean this it's not appreciably lighter but it's lighter than a loaded down yeti is so that's it absolutely love this thing i mean absolutely love it i'll put some links below if they are amazon links they are affiliate links i get a tiny tiny bit you don't pay anymore but i'll also put the rei links and the backcountry links i mean it's it's march right yeah so it's march so they'll have they might be going on sale soon and they'll definitely have the 20 percent off one full price coupon coming up that's it if you have any questions hit me in the comments and i'm happy to answer them uh, if you thought this was useful at all please hit the like button and if you like talking about backpacking or an overlanding or base camping style gear you should definitely subscribe that's all we do around here and until next time go have some fun outside see you soon